Hello there, welcome back to my channel where I try to solve problems nobody asked me to do. Initially today's dilemma was how to improve on my soldering station setup, but then it turned into how can I use my soldering iron without being anchored to a wall? Let me explain. So here's my current high-tech soldering organization system, also known as throw everything in a plastic box. Inside I have my trusty TS-101 soldering iron, some solder wire, some flux, a tip cleaner and some other bits and bobs. Now whenever I want to use my iron, I've been grabbing my laptop charger. It works great, except for that whole need electricity from the wall situation. Initially I wanted to create some kind of all-in-one soldering station masterpiece. You know, one of those projects where you spend 30 hours designing and printing something you could have bought for $15 on AliExpress. Anyway, looking on the web, I found this beauty and some variations of it that had compartments for almost everything I needed. Almost. Right before hitting print, it came to me that I could try designing something myself. So I fired my 3D modeling software with the confidence of someone who once successfully designed a cube and thought how hard could this be? Five hours later, yeah, it definitely looks like a toilet. Not even a stylish one. We're talking gas station bathroom quality. Five hours of my life gone. All I had to show for it was something that I'd be embarrassed to print even if no one else would ever see it. Then it hit me. Why am I trying to print a box when I already have one? This plastic container that I've been using works just fine. So I scrapped the toilet design, saving both filament and my dignity in one move. But I still wanted to solve the mobility issue. Here's my current power solution. This laptop charger putting out 70 watts. Perfect for my soldering needs, but with one fatal flaw, that darn cord that needs to be plugged into something. I thought about the power bank, but the one I have tops out at 20 watts. Surely I can do better, right? I do have this drill, sitting and doing nothing all day, and it also checks all my boxes. Power source, check. Already on it, check. Portable, check. Enough juice for my soldering iron, probably check. Yeah, I think this was it. I could use my drill battery to power my soldering iron and achieve true soldering freedom. The only downside being that I need to remember to charge it from from time to time. But hey, that's future me's problem. So I hopped on AliExpress faster than you can say month-long shipping and ordered these. A battery adapter specifically made for my battery, which conveniently came with pre-attached wires, a switch, three fuses and a double-sided connector. An XT60 female connector that also had wires already attached and an XT60 male to DC cable to actually power the iron. Total cost? Less than a decent power bank for sure. And I'd still have my drill battery for, you know, actual drilling. I also found this design online by a user who clearly has their life together better than I do and modify it to create an enclosure to hold any excess wires that would attach directly to the battery adapter with some screws and nuts. While my printer was busy turning plastic filament into something useful, I also modified another user's design of a soldering iron holder. I added a magnet on the bottom of it so it could attach to my metal tip cleaner and now it's time to showcase my 3D prints. But there's that unwritten rule of 3D printing. Your first attempt must fail in exactly one critical way that requires a complete reprint. So that's exactly what happened with this bottom part of the enclosure. The opening for the XT60 connector was too small, so I redesigned it with a larger opening, made it slightly bigger overall and added some grooves for the nuts because apparently I was feeling fancy. Now for the satisfying part, putting it all together. First I glued the magnet into the soldering iron holder, then assembled it with a screw, nut and a bearing. I initially grabbed the wrong screw because apparently I enjoy making simple tasks more complicated. It's my special talent. Next I installed one of the fuses into the design spot on the positive wire of the battery adapter. Then came the electrical connection. I used the double-sided connector to join the battery adapter wires with the XT60 female connector wires. Red to red, black to black, not exactly rocket science, but still satisfying when you get it right. I secured the 3D printed enclosure to the battery adapter using some screws and the embedded nuts, which fit perfectly because I'm occasionally competent. Next, I tucked all the excess cables and the double-sided connector inside the enclosure, making sure to position the XT60 female connector but it's designed open. I connected the battery adapter to the battery, grabbed the XT60 to DC cable and my soldering iron and made the final connection. And it worked! It actually worked! The iron heated up just like it does with a wall adapter. I felt like I just discovered electricity, even though all I did was reroute it. I had achieved portable soldering freedom. No more being anchored to outlets. No more extension cords. I could now solder anywhere. Outside, in my car, on the bus. Though I can't think of why I'd want to do the last one. Next, I attached the 3D printed magnetic clips to the enclosure lid, mounted the metal tip cleaner on top, and then attached the soldering iron holder to the top of the tip cleaner. Unfortunately, placing the soldering iron on the holder was like trying to balance
a pencil on its tip. One wrong move and I'd have a hot iron falling somewhere unfortunate. Back to the drawing board, I found a clamp design online and modified it to hold my soldering iron holder more securely. I won't show you another 3D print time lapse because watching 3D printers work is only interesting for about 30 seconds. This time the holder worked much better. It stayed firmly in place and could catch the iron even when I threw it in there, which I don't recommend doing with a 350 degree metal stick, but it's nice to have the option. Is it perfect? Nope. It could still be improved and I might revisit it in the future after it annoys me enough times. But for now, it works well enough to call this project complete. So there you have it. My portable battery powered soldering station made with a drill battery that I already had lying around and a few cheap additions. The best part, I can grab it and go whenever I need to fix something away from my desk. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this project and if you want to see more of my questionable design decisions and occasionally successful hacks, make sure to subscribe. Drop a comment if you have any suggestions for improving this setup or any ideas for future projects or just tell me how you would have done it better in half the time with cheaper parts. I can take it. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.